When making junk journals and creative journals, you sometimes want to have a lined page where you can write notes or journal your thoughts. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to add backgrounds and lines to your printable junk journal pages using Photoshop. I'm using a set of free printable journal pages that are available for download in my free printables library, so you can download and follow along with the instructions. However, you can use any type of journal page in digital format, such as JPEG files or even PDF files. Although these pages are in PDF format, it's easy to open PDF files in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. To begin, open Photoshop and on the main menu select File Open. Browse to the folder where the file is located, select it and click Open. Alternatively, drag the file out of the folder and onto the Document window. Once the file is open in Photoshop, the Import PDF dialog box opens up and you have the option to select the page that you want to open. On the dialog box, you can select whether you want to open the file in PDF format or JPEG format. I'm going to select page 10 in JPEG format. This page is sized 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches high. So I'm going to design it so that it folds in half to fit a journal sized 5.5 inches wide by 8.5 inches high. To make it easy to align the lines for the page, we first need to set up some guides. To create a vertical guide, select the Move tool, then click on the ruler on the left side of the document frame and drag across to the right. Position the guide at the halfway mark at 5.5 inches. If the rulers aren't showing on your document frame, on the main menu select View and make sure that rulers are checked. Next, make two horizontal guides and position them at the top and bottom, one at the half inch mark and one at the eight inch mark. Once the guides are positioned, make sure to save your document in PSD format so you don't lose any of your work. To draw a line, select the Line tool, make sure black is selected as the foreground colour, then select the line width. I like my lines to be thin, so I'm using one pixel, however you can make your lines thicker if you prefer. Hold down the Shift key on your keyboard, and somewhere at the top near the guideline, Draw a line straight across the width of the page from left to right. Holding down the Shift key will ensure that the line is straight. Because the line is so thin, it's difficult to align it with the top horizontal guide using your mouse. An easy way to move the line is to select the layer with the line, then press and hold the up arrow key on your keyboard to move the line into position. Make sure that the line is perfectly aligned with the guideline at the top. To view the line, you can hide and reveal the guidelines by using the keyboard shortcut Control semicolon for Windows or Command semicolon for Mac. Now you need to do some math and calculate the number of lines you need to fill the page. I like my lines to be spaced a quarter inch apart, so I need a total of 22 lines. If you want to space them at a different width, you'll need to recalculate this number. To copy the line, select the layer, then use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-J for Windows or Command-J for Mac to copy and paste. Do this 21 times for a total of 22 lines. To better manage all these lines, you can put them into a folder. To do this, select the top line, Hold down the Shift key on your keyboard and select the bottom line. Use keyboard shortcut Ctrl G for Windows or Command G for Mac to create a folder. To space the lines evenly down the page, select the line on the top layer, 
hold down the shift key on your keyboard, then hold and press the down arrow key to move the line all the way down to align with the bottom guide. Holding down the shift key and the down arrow key at the same time moves the line 10 pixels at a time, as opposed to 1 pixel at a time if you just press the down arrow key. So this moves it quicker. Once the line is accurately aligned with the bottom guide, select all the line layers, then click the vertical distribution button. This button will automatically distribute and space the lines evenly down the page. If you prefer to have lines in a different color to black, select the lines folder in the layers panel, click the create a new fill or adjustment layer icon, and select the solid color adjustment. Close the box and clip the adjustment layer to the lines folder. To do this, right click on the adjustment layer and select Create Clipping Mask. This will ensure that the color change will only apply to the lines inside the folder and nothing else. Double click inside the adjustment layer to bring up the dialog box, then select a different color. I usually like to pick up one of the darker colors on my page, so I've chosen color number E4799A. Close the dialog box and you'll see that the lines now blend a bit better with the page. If you have a busy background, it can sometimes be difficult to see the lines. So to fix this problem, you can adjust the opacity of the background layer to allow the lines to become more visible. Select the background layer, click on the Create a New Layer icon, and you'll see that a new layer is created above the background. Fill this layer with the color white using the bucket tool. Now you can change the opacity of the white layer to fade the background. I've adjusted the opacity to 30%, and now the lines seem to be more noticeable. To make a double page with lines on only one side, select the Lines folder and drag the lines across to the vertical guideline in the middle. Also drag the white opacity layer across to the middle as well. This gives you a nice double page with lovely imagery on one side and lines on the other. To make a plain writing page without any faded imagery on the background, select the background layer and create a new layer above it. You can fill this layer with any color, but I'm going to use the same pink color as I used to color the lines, which is E4799A. Use the bucket tool to fill the layer with color, then drag the right edge of the layer across to the middle using the Move tool. You can make this layer darker or lighter in color by adjusting the opacity on the white layer above. If you prefer a darker background, you can make the colour of the lines lighter. Copy the white coloured layer using keyboard shortcut Ctrl J for Windows or Command J for Mac and move it above the colour adjustment layer on the lines folder. Clip the layer to the adjustment layer and then adjust the opacity. You can create a transparent colour background by adjusting the opacity of the coloured layer so that the background design shows through a little. To create a border around the writing page, select the pink layer and the white layer above and link them together using the Link Layers icon. Now, if you resize or move one of those layers, the other will resize and move also. Make two new guides. Position one guide half inch in from the left and the other guide half inch in from the centre. Resize the pink and white layers to fit within the guides.
To adjust the width of the lines, open the Lines folder and hide the top line and the bottom line by clicking the little eye icon. Select the Lines folder layer and using the Move tool, move the lines in to align with the left and right edges of the background. To blend the two pages together so that the writing page looks like it's bleeding into the opposite page, you can add a vignette style border. Select the coloured writing page background layer, then select the rectangular marquee tool and set the feather to 100 pixels. Draw a rectangular section within the guidelines, then use keyboard shortcut Ctrl Shift I for Windows or Command Shift I for Mac to inverse the selection so that the outside edges of the layer are selected. Use keyboard shortcut Ctrl C for Windows or Command C for Mac to copy the selection, then Ctrl V for Windows or Command V for Mac to paste it on a new layer. Drag the layer to the top of the Layers panel and position it on the right side of the document. You may need to slightly adjust the opacity of the coloured background layer on the left so that the layers blend together perfectly. I've adjusted the layer from 100% to 95%. You can then adjust the opacity of both coloured background layers even further to allow the background design to show through slightly. You can also use the feathered selection to make a background with a soft feathered edge. Select the coloured writing page background layer, then select the rectangular marquee tool and set the feather to 100 pixels. Draw a rectangular section within the guidelines, then use keyboard shortcut Ctrl Shift I for Windows or Command Shift I for Mac to inverse the selection so that the outside edges of the layer are selected. Hit the Delete key on your keyboard, then use keyboard shortcut Ctrl D for Windows or Command D for Mac to deselect the selection. This creates a background with a soft feathered edge. Adjust the width of the lines if necessary. Using these simple techniques, you can create all sorts of different writing pages for your junk journals using printable pages that you may already have in your stash. Mm -hmm.